Hello and welcome to the Poor Hammer Podcast, episode 48. Welcome to your first ever Poor Hammer Hot Takes. Yeah, it's good fun. (laughs) So without any further ado, let's jump into this thing. All right, before we begin, let's warn our audience and explain what Hot Takes means. On today's episode, we are going to be discussing the gigantic rules update that occurred this week. Yeah, so these are Hot Takes. Takes. We haven't really thought about it too much. We haven't been able to test anything. These are not reviews. These rules came out as an update 30 hours ago for us. We have not dissected them. We did not get them early to play with them for three weeks beforehand because we're not cool. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we don't, we don't get any of that stuff. We're normal plebs. Yes, and a key part of this, we are not going to spend an equal amount of time on every faction as we roll through this, just like GW didn't. (laughs) We're going to be probably focusing on the factions that our playgroup plays, and more importantly, ones that we play and will have more emotional response to. So we may miss something that affects your faction, and we may lose some of the nuanced takes that your faction's players may have been able to point out. All right, with all of that out of the way, let's dive in. Sounds good. So, first off, this is like a five-part change all at once, because this is like the season change and the data slate change. So there's a lot of things we have to keep in mind when going through this that we're going to absolutely fail at. The biggest one for me is Ark of Omens. Yeah. The Ark of Omen detachment is huge. It's really cool, too. It is. I'm going to say a lot on this episode. I have very mixed feelings on a lot of changes. I would say about everything in this update is two step forward, one step back. Yeah, and I mean, that's pretty common for GW changes. There's healthy ideas behind the change, but potentially problematic things that are of a result. Good goals, wrong path to them. Yeah. So let's start off with the general changes. Arc of Omen, Detachment, super fascinating. I like it about 90%. I dislike some corner cases that pop up. I do like the idea that, like, generally it's supposed to be easier to build lists without quite as much troop tax. The feel bads of like, I don't want to play that shit. That's not why I'm here. And one thing I really like is what you said there of troop tax is what we always think of troops as. Yeah. The competitive changes for the Ark of Omen season combined with the Ark of Omen detachment is fascinating because it seems like they're trying to make you not want to think of troops as a tax. Right. Because they're trying to give you reasons to want your troops. There are some secondaries in the competitive rules, or or tertiaries, however you want to think of them, for mission rules where you get more points if troops do it, or war dogs. Stuff like that. So I enjoy that aspect to counteract the fact that you are no longer required to take troops, because often you would try to do patrols and battalions to save CP, which meant you spent points on troops that you didn't really want in your army. Nice balance. Yeah, it it is interesting, like you said, that like troops have a reason potentially other than just I have to take these so that I have a valid list. I think it's cool. And like as an orc player, I'm just like, oh, man, I could do all kinds of stuff. (laughs) Doesn't mean it's good. And I like the idea of like it's a massive shakeup just from that aspect alone. And when we get to Space Marines, the sticky troops is going to be another way that improving troops. And another big change that's affecting everybody is the changes to the ally rule system. I think this is kind of for like soup ideas going on because they've been trying to figure out how to how to make that work without being busted for a while now. Another big general change was the changes to ally factions. So this is the Battle Brothers ruling. Yeah, it's the Battle Brothers rule. It's in Ark of Omens. The long and short of it is basically anyone in the Imperium can take Imperial Knights. Anyone in Chaos can take Chaos Knights. Uh, You can take a detachment of demons matching your army's keyword. If you're one of the Chaos Space Marine versions of that god, it's got the basic Gene Stealer cults. Tyranids slap together. It's everything you expect, but it's weird. The way it's all written out is kind of weird. Well, okay, so we're working off like a leaked page still, whether or not you guys get to see a nice clean page. Right. But it's so dumb to me that Tau can't ally with Votan, but Space Marines can. But Space Marine can ally with Votan, but not Imperial Guard. That one's a bit weird. The the Votan one feels so forced. Like, it's the first bullet point, and you know that was decided by management. <laughs> Everything about that seems salesy. 
Yeah. And I think that's my problem with it. Like, I get the idea of like, hey, in competitive play, we've had problems with allies historically. Currently, the top faction before this rebalance is demons or chaos souping demons to get a hold of their (laughs) one key unit because we made it so easy to soup demons. I mean, that's been something that they've been trying to deal with of soup list forever, basically, because like you want to enable the ability to have fun with those types of interactive lore. Yeah, you want to encourage Encourage souping in ways that make sense for your fluffy lists. Right. But you want to discourage souping just to gain an advantage numerically, like the mathematically best thing should not be to soup. Right. And it is honestly a difficult thing to solve just because like competitive players are going to look for that fringe case and they're going to take advantage of it. And locking it all down will limit the amount of fun fluffy lists that you can do. Yeah, and they did a pretty good job of keeping a lot of the like what I would call the key soups. Drukari gets Harlequin. Yeah, they they kept that. They kept the weirdest one to me is they kept Disciples of Bellicor, which they've been pushing so hard this edition. Man, they really want that to be a thing. Sure. (laughs) It frustrates me as a lore guy. There is no lore for this. Bellicor got a remodel (laughs) and technically always existed in 40k silently as like a playable character. But like, if you want to push this so hard, why have you not made me want this yet? Well, I mean, if they keep pushing it, you're going to want it. Like, you can't be a fan of Bellacor. You can't be a fan of Bellacor. <laughs> I, I plan on doing some lore rant video soon because I'm sure that will do well. People will love my anger at certain parts of the lore. But the basics are all here. Overall, it seems fine. I'm sure that there's enough to have fun with it, and I'm sure that there's going to be something that they've missed, and it's going to be broken. So for the other universal changes that are getting done right now, we've got the data slate has aircraft start off the board. Everyone can thank Tau if you were ever thinking about playing an aircraft in your army and it isn't the most broken thing in existence. Put it back on the damn shelf. Dude, I'm so angry about this. Orc players, you got hit for doing dumb stuff. Fair. But come on, man. We don't need to keep getting pounded into the dirt on this. I want to play some of the coolest fucking airplanes ever. Try being a Necron player. We have bad aircraft. (laughs) I was like, what good aircraft do you even have? All right, you still have to take them, though. If you want to play an aircraft, they're already bad. Now I suffer because Tau and Tyranids have good ones. It's real awkward. They found a way to make the Necron combat patrol worse, which is impressive. I don't hate the change on bombers having to stay to do their damage. That makes sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me that much. Whatever. As a balance point, I'm just like, yeah, that's a fine way to add that little bit of balance into it. But like, they went a bit hard against aircraft on this one. Not particularly happy with it. (laughs) And of course, there is a final universal change. This affects both of us, actually, if you look at our avatars. It's gone. We're we're now paper dolls. I'm not. Speak for yourself. I have all his dust. (laughs) Yeah, armor of contempt, gone. It's an interesting one. I mean, I knew it was going to happen at some point. Armor of contempt was a band-aid. It was, and I have all sorts of conspiracy theories I've thought up over the last day about the whys. It's very weird to me because it affected more than Space Marines. It was a band-aid on everything in Power Armor. It affected CSM. It affected Sisters. It affected things that aren't getting Space Marine to the book. Yeah, well, and I mean, because it affected so many, it affected the other ones by what loadouts they would want. It was such a vast, sweeping rule that everybody was affected by it. Yeah, you had something like 50% of players or 60, something like that, played AOC armies. So even if you didn't play it, your list was changed by it. Yeah, I'm not saying it was a good rule from a, like, healthy rule, but it was a good solution to a problem. It was a perfect example of what the data slate can do. Right. You provided a kind of fluffy buff to a bunch of factions that had balance issues. You managed to make it work. And then you fucked it up by adding guard to it to act as a band-aid rather than just fixing guard properly or releasing their codex a year ago. Yeah, I was like, or just releasing their codex at some point. So, so that screwed up Armor of Contempt. And it at least needed to be pulled off guard. 
So that's nice. And realistically, it needed to go eventually. Like, it was a Band-Aid solution. There should have been a more individual fix for every faction, essentially. This is obviously, like, one where it's going to be a pretty long wishy-washy opinion, but, like, positives for getting rid of it. There are a lot of changes that we're going to talk about as we run through these factions that are remove previous balance changes, get closer to what the Codex launched as. Which is nice. There is a part of me that wants to give the benefit of the doubt and say, we know from leaks at the beginning of 9th edition that basically before 9th edition launched, there was a time when they were beta testing every book at once, like should always be the case. And we didn't have half the armies playing 9th edition and half playing 8th edition. Yeah, that would be nice. Unrealistic, kind of, but it would be nice. But you could argue that a lot of these unbalanced codices like Drukari, Admech, the old terrors that are, then fell off the face of the earth. Right. Or to roughly balance for Drukari, they never fell off the face of the earth. But that those ones would be balanced against all the factions now that they're all duking it out. So there's part of that you could argue is like, hey, we can pull off Armor of Contempt. Everyone's got their codex. It is time to play 9th edition as Games Workshop intended when they wrote these things. And then delayed for two years. Yeah, but I don't think that's what happened. No, I don't. <laughs> but but I accept it would be nice if that's what happened. Yeah, they, there's things wrong with the Armor of Contempt change. Like, first and foremost, I despise that Space Marines has widened the gulf between the fantasy and the tabletop. The fantasy fantasy super powerful super soldiers in giant suits of indestructible armor destroying everything in their path they're the rarest thing the the tool that are the last thing you do is to use space marines on a solution right the guard failed send a space marine we're looking at sending master chief in to solve the problem exactly master chief is what space marines wish they were space marines look a lot more like guard when we get into the space marine part of this and that's awkward as hell i don't like that part of armor contempt going I'll, I'll be honest, a lot of other things, like, we'll get to it in Grey Knights, but Space Marines are not the only ones that are looking more and more like a non-elite army. So, uh, that wraps up the universal changes. Now, let's spend an asymmetrical amount of time talking about all of the factions of 40k. <laughs> You want to start off with Space Marines? So, some changes for Space Marines. They removed the change for Salamanders, so they're back to their old ability because it overlapped with Armor of Contempt. Now it's back to what it used to be. There was some rebalance stuff for some secondary things and all that jazz. I'm not going to get too much into that because, just so everyone is aware, Eric and I don't play much with the competitive rulebook anymore, partly because it was out of stock for its entire existence for the last six months, and I got sick of looking it all up on Wapedia. Partly because Maelstrom is just a better format. That was Tempest. Tempest, Maelstrom, whichever one is 9th edition. Blame Tabletop Tactics for doing this to me. Yeah, it's one of those that, like, we don't really know that much about that. And at the same time, like, secondary changes are so difficult to actually, like, pinpoint what it's going to do. Yeah, we're basically just randomly guessing. Yeah, it, it all depends on the lists that are being built, how the lists are able to be built for that, what the meta is in comparison against those. Like, it's just secondaries are very hard to actually nail down ahead of time. And I mean, this one didn't seem huge. I don't know. <laughs> they got two major buffs, though. The first smaller one is just troops have a rule in the data slate now that causes objectives to be like sticky obsec, which is a thing. And at least it was a thing in like certain crusade missions. I don't remember if it was a thing in the last competitive i think like one of the maps might have had it i think so I, I know it was in some of the narrative ones but whatever uh so now if you have troops on an objective and they leave it as a space marine it stays yours until an opponent walks on it it's neat it's more space marine -y. it gets into the hole then since it's a balancing thing you get to poke holes in it lore wise like why the fuck doesn't that work for custodies then like they're better yeah. Why doesn't it work for CSM? They're the same thing. Yeah. Or Grey Knights. Well, yeah, I mean, it's fine. Whatever. So the biggest win for Space Marines for me, the thing that it's one of the things I spitballed as a way to buff them back when they were having issues was changing combat doctrines. I love this. Because this is so much closer to how the 9th edition rules for every army have been for these turn rules. It's a lot less draconian than it was. It's you start the game in Devastator Doctrine... You may choose at the beginning of turn two and every turn after that if you want to change to tactical. When you're in tactical at the start of turn, you can choose to change to assault. It's so simplistic. 
it's so correct. It is, yeah. it is, this is how this should be. Now we could argue this now moves the internal balance for sub factions towards the ones that want to be in Devastator because you can have five turns of Devastator. You only get three of Assault if you're a melee based army and it starts on turn three unless you spend CP to force something in early, stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, it's just the. The upsides of it being a clean rule that you can, everybody can understand and play around, it's so much better for that reason alone. And I don't see it being that huge of a downside that, like, you can only be in assault for the late game. Like, I guess turn two, it could be problematic. And turn two is the big one. If it was, so if this was a ninth edition rule, and it wasn't like the eighth edition rule that kind of began the ninth edition rules. It was like the beta test version. If this was like the Custodes one with the Kataz, don't get me started on Kataz. But if it was like that, it would basically be you start with Devastator Tactical Assault, put them in order. At the beginning of each turn, you start with the first one and you can move to your second choice and then you can move to your third choice and then you're locked. Yeah, but if it was Custodes, then you'd be able to choose one of them and have both of them at the same time. Uh, you can already do that in Space Marines with the current ones. It's just not being Necrons helps. That's true, yeah. And I know they fix Necrons, but I'll still be salty forever. <laughs> so this all came with point changes. Right, and most of them were point decreases. Yes, and shout out while we're working on this and doing this episode to Tabletop Tactics the greatest battle report youtube series thank you for collating this data into a what it was what it is now all in a nice beautiful format thank you for doing the work that the company selling us this product didn't do <laughs> so yeah it's nice to go through here and check things out for what changed one of the patrons brought up the funniest thing to me so with the new arc of omen detachment this is the one trick for space marines for this episode i hate this Assault Intercessors dropped because they lost Armor of Contempt to 17 points. Barely more than a one moon tactical marine was. Yeah, that's pretty cheap. With the Ark of Omens detachment, you can have up to 12 troops. And troops don't suffer rule of three. Assault Intercessors come at 17 points a model. You can have 110 Assault Intercessors split over 11 of these troops for 1870. <laughs> We have 130 points left to burn. You still have, the, have to have your HQ. Oh boy, it sure is great that you could have a chaplain. <laughs> you could even have a super chaplain. <laughs> Let me introduce you. To guard 2.0. <laughs> to 111 chaps and ass. <laughs> wow, I hate it. <laughs> I hate it, but that is funny. It is interesting that a lot of the special weapons were decreased to free. I'm going to have a minority opinion here, especially knowing how many people play Space Marines. I like the free war gear for the most part. Okay. A lot of people pointed out how, especially if you play old Marines, how this causes problems where, hey, but I can take everyone with a thunder hammer and a storm shield and a jet pack and an electro whizzy dick and all of these other things. <laughs> I, I can take all of these fancy features for zero points now, but none of my models are modeled this way, and none of my kits come with these because these were options in 19 Dickity 2 on a kit that's not in existent anymore. Right. The problems all come from the old Marine kits that should have been retired a while ago, but still exist and will not soon, is my hot take there. I think that's probably wrong, but... There's no way in 11th edition they exist. 11th edition is 10 years away, Brad. No, 11th edition's two years away, Eric. Maybe three. Yeah, keep telling yourself that. I mean, 10th edition is June. Editions are approximately two years. I, I have my doubts that 10th edition is going to be on schedule correctly. Welcome to hot takes where we're gonna tangent a lot and back to my original point when we get there we know that 10th edition in all probability from the leaks that have been pretty reliable for years now we're going to get the primaris equivalent of the jump pack units which is one of the two last things that don't have new marines the other being gravis is kind of a poor equivalent to terminators which is like the most beloved old marine thing left 
Right. They'll probably do Gravis 2 Electric Boogaloo, which will be more Terminator y. It could be possible that in 11th they kill off the old Marines just because, like, that's enough time that, like, they could do some major, like, there's a new part of lore that's happening and something needs to, like, you know, the old stuff, like, isn't working. No, no, they don't have to do any of that. Every book since the introduction of Primaris has had a page or more dedicated to staring the reader in the face and saying, Old Marines are dying out. There will only be <laughs> Primaris soon. Old Marines are a thing of the past. Stop fucking playing with them. Do not assume Old Marines will be in 40k forever. Yeah, I, I mean, it's you bring valid points. If they just said, stop playing Old Marines, it would fix the problem with this change, and it would be better for basically every other faction. Yeah, and I honestly, that's like one of the big things is like, this change is the change to war gear where a lot of it's becoming free is like kind of universal and generally good for many factions and it's good for players so specifically not competitive players but they don't matter there's like 150 competitive players on earth and even then it's like if you're that into it you have to mag things that sucks and that's always been the case for people who are more competitive and anal like us and eventually you get over that fact and learn you don't care that much and you just glue it anyway and then just buy more models like you were intended to <laughs> But uh, back to like the why I actually like this change of the free war gear that everyone got and Space Marines were talking about it here because it, it's huge here. When little Timmy and little Jimmy put together their first combat patrols, they're going to want to put the cool stuff on their models. You don't want your player to feel guilty about doing the cool thing. When I put together a combat patrol that I've got, I'm like, I want the coolest fucking weapon. And making the cool thing the correct choice is good in-game design. Yes. Many lectures will teach you this. Yeah. Mark Rosewater famous, yes. Players will optimize fun out of the game. <laughs> Players will do what's best to win the game, even if they hate it. Your job as a game designer is to make the best thing the most fun thing. Which, if you have the ability to choose whichever word gear is cool, that means that for you, the best thing is the fun thing. The only problems that exist with this idea when you're like, oh, well, that makes sense for Death Guard because they get one of each of these weird special weapons. If you equip a whole squad with them, they're not overpowered. They're just kind of cool. And you can equip them basic loadout and it has a point, but like you want the correct thing to be for him to have that giant flail. You want it to be interesting and unique and fun. And it helps because the Death Guard kit comes with one of each of those options. And you can tell them in the book, you can equip one of each of those options. But then we get to Space Marines, and everybody can equip something there's only one of in the box. And there's problems with this for all over Space Marines that are nowhere else. Obviously with Drukhari, I can point to, we have our Devastator Squad equivalent, which would be the Scourges. The Scourges come with one of every heavy weapon, which is a problem because that's stupid, because you would never have a heavy weapon squad where everyone has one unique weapon. That's a problem where that kit probably could use an update. I was like, there's a general issue of just having Devastator Squad has 20-something options. Cool, that's too many. Hellblasters have the option of, do you want the fast rapid fire one or the shorter stubby assault one that's allows you to run and shoot, but it's slightly weaker, or do you want the big heavy one? And you just equip your whole squad with them and you're done. Just fundamentally, it's a change that I agree with, even though there are problems. The old Space Marines kind of exemplify and show it very obviously, like, but I'm still on board. I still like the idea of War Gears free. And I'm, I'm fine with War Gear that costs points, if it's costed correctly. And it's like, it needs to be unique and interesting if it's going to do that. It, it needs to be like, oh, this is something wild. You know, like this is the death scythe and it's it does something cool and is weird. It's not just, oh, it's a melta, but it's got yellow flames. So I don't know. That's enough of that, man. That's enough of that. 
<laughs> yeah, and and all the problematic lists people are brainstorming right now involve, hey, did you know that in this random sub-faction, you can equip this obscure data sheet with 75 points of options all at once because they didn't write the rules around that? The kit doesn't come that way, but you could do it legally. Overall, it doesn't really matter because all of these changes thrown together, my hot take is still Space Marines are going to be barely scraping 50% win rate because they lost armor contempt. I would completely agree on that. So with that, I mean, let's move on to one that I'm interested in. Let's move on to Grey Knights. Grey Knights, how do I start this? Okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll start you off, Eric. I've got you. The first thing you guys need to know about Eric's hot takes for Grey Knights is he had a really bad work week. Yeah. I'm I'm more positive about Grey Knights than Eric. I think it's going to be a running theme for the person most negative is the one who has to play with them. But then they look at everyone else and they're like, that's not so bad, guys. Right. It kind of is. And like... You lost Armor of Contempt. We lost Armor of Contempt and we didn't really get anything to fix it. We got some point reductions. Most importantly... Free war gear, which I am a big fan of. Hammers are not free. That will never be free. That is a perfect example of the Laz Cannon, the hammer, the thing that would lose its identity if it was free. Or would have to be limited to one per squad and have the base price of the squad know that the Thunder Hammer is going to be the last guy living. Yeah, and I, I do bring it up in like a kind of negative way, but I, I agree with you. Like The hammer is a good example of like, this is the special thing. It's okay to be point costed. And Grey Knights, those old marines, have the awkward issue of there's one hammer per five, but you're allowed to run five hammers per five. Man, it's almost like the problem is old marines. <laughs> All right, so walk me through your actual thoughts on Grey Knights. You lost Armor of Contempt. You are a very tanky psychic army who has AP zero weaponry, which didn't care about Armor of Contempt, which puts you at a net positive against other Armor of Contempt armies while you got the benefit against their AP minus one stuff. Right. One of the biggest things with Armor of Contempt and Grey Knights is Grey Knights is a psychic army. The longer your units stay alive, the more psychic things they can try and cast. The same would be true for everything else, but yes. But it's one of those that, like, every Grey Knight unit is a Psyker. And is priced like they have psychic powers. Yeah, exactly. So, like, if you're only alive for one turn and you get to use psychic power once, you're probably not getting full utilization out of the point cost. If you're able to stay alive for four turns and get the ability to do it four times, you're probably higher and taking advantage of the point cost you're getting more than what you've spent armor of contempt made it tankier so it meant that you were able to generally live for two three turns extra armor of contempt was not two three turns extra against any amount of ap that's not zero and is not four plus where it doesn't matter you're hitting invuls or dead against ap's one through three armor of contempt is one sixth of the damage you take you don't it's a lot of people overvalue armor of contempt the points decreases should help offset Armor of Contempt for the most part. I disagree, particularly in the armies that are trying to focus on elites, because they don't have the wound count. So each wound is more important, so that one-sixth you're trying to bank on, essentially, especially if you're able to buff it with additional defensive layers. You know, it's just one of those, you've got layer upon layer upon layer that you're banking on essentially to get those points out of it so while i i do understand what you're saying and like general troop strike whatever yes because the wound number is where you're getting your value and defensive kind of thing but eric may i please try to sell you on the gray knight changes as some of my most hyped changes sure okay so i'm actually very excited for your changes so the little stuff is cute like it's nice that you can just say all my nemesis dread knights have the teleporter keyword you don't have to pay 10 points for it sure that's nice that's that's the like cool should have been that way it should have been that way and nemesis dreads being 10 more points was fine they're still good so like whatever a four psi cannon purgation squad is down 20 points purgation squads aren't great right now but i love them sure so that's already a win in my book for purgation squads there. Fast attacks, you got the generic undo the nerf that all of the strikes got. 
where it's like, hey, uh, interceptors went up two points previously to nerf them because they were a problem. We'll undo that nerf because they lost Armor of Contempt. You take one-sixth more damage within the window of the damage that cared about it, and you lose 10% points to counteract that. Yeah. Then we get to your elites. Paladins is kind of the low point for me. I, I won't lie. And I know you're a paladin, man. That's why I'm here. Do you know what Grey Knights are supposed to be? I know. And and Paladins are the low point here because they did not get a point drop, which with Armor of Contempt gone is essentially saying Paladins got a point increase. They're 45 points. They were already bad, yes. Now, the plus side for Paladins is free war gear. You get two heavy weapons for five. So it's it's a cute little upgrade, but it, yeah, it's not it's not great. Like, honestly, you're, you, you don't care about that. On, like, it's just a cute little thing on your Paladin squads. This is the one data sheet where I would say the buff I would give it is give them the free nemesis demon hammers. Let paladins just be the guys who run around with five hammers. So yeah, paladins is the low point here. However, however, let's move to your troops. This is the big win for me, which is the terminators. Terminators were awful when the book came out we talked about this in an early episode that has never been on youtube where we talked about how a faction can be competitively good but the people playing it can still dislike it because the fantasy of the army is not being met uh the classic example at the time was gray knights the terminator army the people who are coming here to play with terminators paladins who are terminators whatever were stuck playing the strike marine army the ugly 511 short king army yeah we are finally mathematically to the point where defensively terminators and strikes are nearly equivalent i mean strikes are still better they're still better offensively yes but defensively it's finally correct to have either one playing d on a point cool I'm happy about that. It's such a good step in the right direction. I know it doesn't totally solve it, but it's a huge win. It's just like, I see what you're saying. It it is correct for the Terminator to be cheaper. 35 is probably still a bit too much, but it's about where we're looking at. But just like mathematically, the strike is still the right option because defensively, it's about the same, but offensively, it's better. Let alone the fact that you're able to manipulate your list easier because it's less point per model. So you can have more of a granular option in your list building strategy. Also, why am I doing any of that when I can just take the interceptors? I'll just take all the fucking interceptors and I'll take some Nemesis Dread Knights. I'm going to max out a Nemesis Dread Knights and I'm going to max out on interceptors. Yes, because you're no longer required to take troops so the Terminator increase doesn't really help. It's fucking stupid. I'm, I want to play Paladins. I don't want to be this fucking weird kind of army that just has a lot of fast flyboys boys. And like, no, man. I will say the Interceptors are like my favorite version of the strike because I like the idea of your fat, heavy Terminators and then guys with teleporter packs to make up for it. I enjoy that balance. The problem is that balance isn't there because there's no reason to take the fat guys standing on points. I was like, yeah, it's if that balance existed, that would be cool. You're right. That would be cool, Brad. I, I actually think one of the things is a nerf for interceptors to not be able to be taken in tens because the whole stupid you can, because you're a space marine, you can split in half for some reason when no other army can do this, even though you're like cavemen tactically compared to all of the Xenos. <laughs> oh, I hate it. Like I said, I, I have it's difficult for me to talk about Grey Knights because I think competitively this might be a buff. But I don't want to play that list. And and it's a list that you've been playing for like a year. Yeah. And when you don't play that list, you get punished. You get punished less now is my big win is like when you take your Terminators that you know are wrong, they're at least less wrong than they used to be. Then like I'm not taking Paladins, I'm taking Terminators, which I guess is fine because like you get the Brotherhood stuff, which is kind of neat. And that's never been like previously that wasn't enough to benefit over Paladins. I would argue previously Paladins were always the somewhat defensible options. Terminators were never defensible. Right. And the correct option was always to just ignore them both, play strikes constantly. Yeah, but like, 
now Terminators are cheaper and you get the Brotherhood stuff. So like, I guess it's not insane. And, and I really think Terminators could have used more of a point cut. Paladins could have used one at all. Honestly, Interceptors should have either stayed the same or gone up by one. They are honestly still even like I get, oh, they cut it because Armor of Contempt is gone. But like. And this is where I have trouble saying that just for your health as a faction externally. Grey Knights, when you abuse every rule in your favor, were having trouble hitting 45%. You were falling out of the bottom of the gray area. We're not in a good spot. And like saying we should nerf interceptors to make other things useful is not the correct answer because interceptors are holding you up at 40 something percent. The only reason why I, I, I have that concern is because of the changes to Ark of Omens. That is drastically going to change how well, one of the things with Grey Knights is even the skewed lists were still not that insane. They were like, okay, you're you're taking a bit much. You've got too many Nemesis Dread Knights. But the rest of the army is still kind of a cohesive thing. I don't think that's going to be the case now. It's going to be Dread Knights and Interceptors. The other thing that irritated me is like they did bring down Kellogg Drago, 15 points, great. He was overcosted even with Armor of Contempt. He's still overcosted. And one of the things with Kaldor Drago was like with Armor of Contempt and his buffs, he was really fucking difficult to get rid of because he had so many stacking defensive layers. I have no reason to play Kaldor Drago now. He's killable now. I don't want to spend 160 points, 165 points on something that's killable. The, the real problem is goddamn Terminators moving five inches is such a downside. And I mean, this doesn't even get into like, there's the secondary changes and like, why would you increase the warp charge of that? It's just annoying. Like, why would you increase the warp charge for purifying ritual? It's already one of those you have to do multiple times. And it, the downside is you're not using those casts defensively or offensively. Why? So they fixed the Demon Slayer Warlord trait. Yes, they finally fixed the thing that we had already fixed ourselves, but thank you. Yeah, I hope I'm wrong. I hope there's healthy lists for Grey Knights that are fun. All right, we're through two of the longest factions for two unrelated reasons. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let's real quick stop by Adeptus Sororitas to laugh, because hey, at least you're not sisters right now. <laughs> I'm sorry if you play sisters, because god damn. Yeah, so what did they get back from AOC removal? Um, they got nerfed. Sisters Repentia cost more in addition to the army lost armor of contempt. Congratulations. Your tanks that no one was playing are slightly cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> Uh, we all got together and gifted one of each of the sister tanks to our player who plays Adeptus Sororitas because... Who doesn't like the tanks. <laughs> specifically doesn't want to have to paint the tanks. Yeah. So we bought them all the tanks. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't, I don't think he's going to be playing sisters for a little bit. No, especially because Death Guard's more interesting right now, in my opinion, and he plays both. So to keep going here, it is time to move on to what I think is probably the biggest winner of the factions that existed before this, which is Adeptus Custodes. Yeah, Custodes. Good lord, did you win in this data slate, guys. <laughs> Everyone else is crying and Custodes players are basking in the golden glory. I'm happy with almost every change except one. I do not like that they unnerfed Esteemed Amalgam, uh, Emperor's Auspice, and the Martial Discretion thing. I kind of hated that they made them once per game instead of just point increasing Esteemed Amalgam. The one I want nerfed is Emperor's Chosen. <laughs> I really despise when so much power is in a single sub-faction that there's never a reason to choose a different one. And the, you get to be... Every sub-faction you want to be on every turn of the game is bullshit. It's annoying, yeah. It should just cost like 3 CP, so you only blow it in an absolute emergency, and then if you're like, you know, I'm blowing this every turn, I should probably just play the damn faction that I'm blowing it for. But when it's 1 CP, you're just gonna do it. Especially now that you get 1 CP on your turn, 1 on your opponent's turn, you can just do it forever. 
that yeah, it's true. I I actually hadn't really thought about the fact that like because the CP stuff, you get to do it whenever you want, essentially. It it's my only downside. Huge wins across the board. Other than that, uh, and that's not a bad thing for you guys. It's just a bad thing for if you don't want to play Emperor's Chosen. There's very little reason not to play Emperor's Chosen. Right. I mean, it, it is a buff. I am so happy that the Terminators got back their obsec. Yeah. So now all infantry, core infantry, and troops. It's all of the Custodes core infantry. Also, only the Anathema Psychana troops, which means only the Purgogators. I don't remember. The, the sisters that are troops. Prosecutors prosecutors basically custodies got obsec back for all the stuff that matters <laughs> they still don't have it on their bikes like an eighth edition but that's how it should be that was dumb but they got it back on their terminators which i call a huge win as that is like my favorite part of that army those big bulky termies well and it was it was honestly really dumb that custodies didn't have that like when like my faction does it in Thousand Sons. My Terminators get obsec, but a fucking Custody doesn't. Yeah, I... So, very happy for Custodes. And you got buffs. You didn't get nerfed. You didn't lose Armor of Contempt. You got my favorite trick, the Witch Seeker Flamer Bus, got a buff. And I love that now. It went from my favorite toy to, I actually think this is competitively viable. Along with the Prosecutors as well. I guess that makes sense given the obsec stuff. And and well, they already were obsec. I'm, that part is just how that rule was written. It's oh. just elongated back to what it was. The reason they got a point decrease is because they were used to fill out a detachment. You would take two custodian guards and one of them because you had to take a one-to-one -one ratio to fill out a battalion. That made it cheaper than taking three units of custodian guards. You no longer need to do that, so you might as well make them cheaper so that someone might play them. Right. Yeah, I mean, not many point decreases because, like... You didn't lose Armor of Contempt. The rest of the game did. You won so hard when everyone else is crying about things. <laughs> yeah, there's there's not really any negatives there, which is No. Nice. So Henry Cavall's trip to Warhammer to secure them with a new show got rewarded. Hell yeah, dude. Now I just need him to get into Grey Knights. There we go. All right. Let's move on to Guard. Guard is the actual biggest winner of the data slate, and I think it's going to be a problem. Uh, but they didn't exist before it, so they don't really count. Yeah, that's my thing. Is like Guard is just weird because like they have new stuff. <laughs> we'll figure out what that means. They have new stuff that basically everyone who has read it has gone, this is probably going to be problematic for being incredibly oppressive. And it got buffed instead of nerfed. <laughs> <laughs> like they received like better secondaries and stuff competitively like none of our local playgroup plays guard so i don't technically care about them one way or the other i'm gonna keep this real short but i am with the people who are like hey if you care about competitive play guard are gonna be a problem probably but that's okay it's guard they need a little bit of <laughs> They need a little bit of love after the shit that they've gone through. So You can be the one everybody else despises for a short time. Get your time in the sun. Bask in their anger. It's great. <laughs> okay, let's move on to Adeptus Mechanicus. Admech's an interesting one, man. Like, they're another big winner from this. Yeah, so core to the Breachers and Destroyers. Which they should have had the whole time, but whatever. And the Bionics is a 5-up in Bone instead of a 6-up. Which is, again, huge. And that's actually, like, you can start making tactical decisions on a 5-up. Like, a 6-up, you're like, I'm just fishing for a 6-up because I did something dumb. A 5-up, you're like, I can make some statistical ideas here. There's the other thing of the whole army got minor point drops everywhere, just like Marines did. Admech didn't lose Armor of Contempt. Now, Admech was trash. <laughs> but it's a big win that you might be out of the dumpster finally. There's going to be... A lot of interesting things for Admech short term until things get figured out. Just having troop options again, because like Destroyers and Breachers being a thing again is wild, because they got destroyed by the 9th edition Codex. Yeah, well, and they are heavy point cost compared to Skatari. Skatari is cheap as fuck, so 
you better be good to compare to it. I'm very interested for the ad mech changes. Like I have concerns that I think it's going to be another one of those like to be good, you have to jump through a bunch of hoops, so you have to be a good player kind of thing and know all of the rules and all of this is and that's is. That's guaranteed because of the Ad Mech 9th Edition Codex. It's overcomplicated as hell because the guy who wrote it could not stop writing rules for Ad Mech. So it's one of those, like, I don't see these changes making it so it's oppressive. I'm worried that the floor and ceiling of Ad Mech are Everest apart. Yes. And, like... Your local AdMec player is at the floor. <laughs> I do feel like more of the war gear could have been just like free instead of because there's still a bunch that are like five points. But AdMec overall solid. Let's move on to Imperial Knights. Yeah, so let's let's just do IK and CK at the same time. Are you ready? Sure. GW forgot you. Okay. The changes aren't in the data slater the points. The changes are in Archibald. The secondaries or tertiaries, whatever you want to call them, the mission secondary, those ones now mention like war dogs can score extra points. War dog spam did not get nerfed. Running Abaddon with war dogs doesn't work. So the best CS or the best CK list is gone. Imperial Knights didn't really care about soup at all because we never got to live with Gilliman working with knights. So they don't care about the change. The big one is knights as soup is huge now because all Imperium can take Imperial Knights, all Chaos can take Chaos Knights, essentially for absolute free. And like, because of the way the new detachment works, like, you don't have to worry about like, oh, I have to warp my list around this. It's just like, yeah. Well, it's, you only get a single unit because it's, it has to be a super heavy ox. So it's only one unit that you get to splash in. So big winners here are people who need ranged heavy weapons or big tanky thing to tango on mid so sisters sisters honestly could be a winner here another one that i know someone pointed out is technically they're like one of the cheaper things you can throw into custodies oh no no oh god no (laughs) custodies with imperial knights might be like better ranged firepower for custodies than any custodies model from like a rule of cool, that's awesome. But it's going to look real dumb after the third tournament. Yeah, Thousand Suns on the CK side of things have debated doing it before, but it's never worth the CP. Now that it's essentially free, we may end up doing it. I've always thought it was worth the CP, but then again, like... No, we have to spend all of our CP. The characters have to have everything, and then you have to have two CP available turn one to (laughs) not have 400 points destroyed right right yeah so like ck and ik changed in weird hard to see ways okay let's move on to chaos space marines so chaos space marines up first here you got nerfed for creations of bile we all knew that one was coming least surprising change kind of thought it was correct to do last time but we knew it was it was figured out too late to be in that right it was one of those like we all knew it needed to be changed but we knew it two weeks before the changes were made public which isn't enough time to really test and like put it out there so now is when it happened okay and you lost armor of contempt another kick to the balls yeah i mean that's honestly kind of annoying (laughs) and you suspiciously got a lot less point decreases than space marines and terminators went up you talk about less point decreases terminators are up three what and slanesh is up another five so technically the the terminators everyone was playing are up eight that's crazy gray knight terminators are 35 (laughs) you can't say the same thing though because like when you had slanesh terminators and you were playing like emperor's children there were some sweet lists doing that but internal balance wise i understand some of the changes the armor of contempt changes don't really get compensated by chaos space marines chaos space marines was an above 50 percent win rate faction and you did get a little bit like legionnaires do get all of the free stuff so like you can you can do your heavy weapon for free. You can do a power axe on your sergeant or whatever for free. I I don't know the legionnaire loadout too well. I'm just guessing based off marines. And that yeah, that's nice. It it's little stuff. It's not making up for the loss of armor of contempt. You're just getting an indirect nerf. And your two sub factions that were 
out of control good both got direct nerfs right and the rest of them i don't think they were good i really don't no there there are several i worry that now csm is going to fall to like a 45 percent win rate army and they won't be fine anymore but like most of their sub factions were hitting 50 percent win rate like apart from like the two really bad ones but okay i mean i think chaos space marines are in a bad spot right now abby did eat a huge nerf though just to double grind in that uh he, he's plus 50 points you can't play him with knights with the way the rules are actually written raw oh geez and they just increased his points by 50 as an extra fuck you for trying part of the problem is like when you put him next to one of the large frame knights it becomes very apparent why those are unplayable <laughs> Questorus frame knights are pointed so heavily for no reason. But yeah, moving into Death Guard, you lost AOC. A lot of your stuff got cheaper. And it it's basically the wash. Like like we talked about, AOC, when it matters, you take one sixth more damage. You lost 10% of points. It should about come out in the wash against like infinite different variations of firepower hitting you. In exchange, you got a bunch of cool war gear changes. Uh, Terminators get to play with all of their fancy toys. Yeah, I mean, I I honestly don't know, because, like, the point stuff, for Death Guard, it probably will work out. Yeah, the big thing for me is, like, all of their vehicles got decent point drops for what they are. Well, I don't think they touched the... No, they didn't touch Plague Burst Crawler, but I kind of get that. Uh, but, like, Mephitic Blight Hauler, Bloat Drones options are now free, so you can run your Flesh Mower or whatever, or your Blight Launcher for free. They, there's some interesting point adjustments. It really will be interesting to see what people have decided to take on this one, just because, like, basically all War Gear is free. For the most part, because the War Gear on the troops was already free. Uh, there's a few, like, Twin Lascan is 10 now on Hellbrew. So, like, I guess there, I was like, is it just literally Death Guard is the faction that we can point to and be like everything's free but no there's still a few that you have to pay for yeah and again i'm okay if it's like the twin las cost some points everything else is free pick what you like all right so we uh move into my annoyance okay let's hear what you've got for thousand sons all right so thousand sons it's kind of funny in a sad way where i checked my other armies i talked with the patrons in the discord and like an hour later, I was at work and I remembered, I never even checked Thousand Sons. Well, nothing will have changed. And I was right. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. So we lost Armor of Contempt. I would argue we were one of the best Armor of Contempt armies because All is Dust combined with Armor of Contempt made us very tanky boys. Yeah, and again, you're Psyker, so the tankier you are, the more efficient you become. And we got fucked by Flamers. Flamers existed, we could sue Flamers for free, our win rate went from 40% to 50%, and they took that as time to nerf Thousand Sons, even though it's the Flamers holding this army up. So we lost Armor of Contempt, and we did not get the points drop every other army got. You did get some fair number of war gear options. Uh, on Eunice, no one used, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so things things that quote unquote matter in thousand suns let me run through them real quick hold on did they make zangors cheaper no i i wish they had the, that's the real problem is like i wish there was a reason to tell someone go buy zangor <laughs> it's so it's so bad dude i hate i hate zangors this is the problem we've talked about this in a couple episodes now i i don't think i've talked about this on air very much zangor were my favorite part of thousand sons i started as a demon guy i got thousand sons so i could soup in you know i love zinch so i might as well play the other zinch army and i was like oh they've got these demon guys in the army who should just be chaos demons it's kind of weird they're in thousand sons but whatever oh they don't have the demon keyword that's also weird that's also weird <laughs> They don't have a lore reason to exist. We could get into that discussion. And they just randomly got pooped into the codex so that they could add units to it in 8th edition when they didn't put any investment into the new army from 7th edition. <laughs> uh, I, I do enjoy hearing your rants about... And then in 9th edition, they nerfed all interactions so that Zangor were never correct to take. But uh, to, to go through Thousand Suns real quick, the things that change that matter. Exalted Sorcerers... 
You can take a Kopesh for free now, so it's just assumed you have a Kopesh. Cool. Uh, all of the pistols that do not matter, you can take whatever pistol you want. They still don't matter. <laughs> you can take uh, Inferno Combi Melta for free now on your Sorcerer and Terminator armor. That gun that I never cared about. Okay. <laughs> Troops. The two options on Zangor are now baked into the 70 base points, which is nice, I guess. They're like demons, again. Uh, cultists, the weird five extra point things that cultists can wear are free, I guess, but it doesn't matter. They're not going to deal any damage the whole game. The Hellbrute's options are cheaper. The Twin Laz is the only thing that costs points now. The Hellbrute is 105 points that doesn't give you any Cabal points, so no one's going to take it still. Which sucks, because I, I do actually think the Hellbrute's cool. If the Hellbrute could cast one spell, deny one spell, and gave me a Cabal point, I would take Hellbrutes. I don't think it would be, like, good. I, I would take my 3D printed Hellbrute, which looks more like it should belong in Thousand Suns, because it's just a dreadnought, but whatever. <laughs> Scarab Occult Terminators got untouched, which is a nerf, again, because they lost Armor of Contempt. They were probably the best Armor of Contempt receiver in Chaos, at least. Probably, yeah. The Zangor Shaman's down 10 points, which is actually a thing, especially elite characters, which we haven't really talked about this for all the other armies. It's a minor little buff. They no longer fight your elites for slots. Right. Which is big because elite characters are often considered useless, not just because they increase the amount of points you give up against things like um, assassination or a poor the witch or whatever if you're a psyker army. They also were fighting often your best slot in your list. Now they don't fight that. So for all the armies we've mentioned previously, like Grey Knights, your apothecary got a buff by not fighting your paladins or your whatever else is in your elite slot for slots it, it is actually pretty interesting to be able to have nine elites essentially because three of them have to be characters but like there's some interesting stuff you could do with that yeah ancients don't cost you a slot they just cost you their points we could still argue if they're worth it or not but right i mean i was i'm i'm more interested in it for orcs but yeah, it is good for the, the armies that are trying to push more elite slots. So back in the Thousand Sun specifics, our Chaos Bonds are down two points. Sweet, because we basically just run a single Chaos Bond to hold a point in the back. Or these Thousand Suns Chaos Bonds can actually fuck. We often run them in five spawn squads to just go screw with people on midboard. I'm a fan of that, so... It is actually a minor win there. Those tanks no one has ever purchased or ever used. All lost points. The Mutilith Vortex Beast, my favorite doggo, is 15 points cheaper. Nice. He's still really bad. It's still not what you should do, but congratulations. You've gained 15 points for your, your stupid list. <laughs> when I waste points on playing the doggo. You're not wasting quite as many. <laughs> uh, Magnus the Red is still 420 too many points, but... Yeah. <laughs> they could have at least lowered him to 400. Like, he should be like... If I'm being, like, super spiky about it, like, 350? 360, 380, something like that. It might be, it might be 320, but we'll say 350. It could be really cheap, because I think Thousand Sun is in a really bad spot right now. I actually do, too. I think this is going to be that, how could we have seen this? <laughs> we nerfed thousand suns indirectly we didn't give them the compensation buffs because they were doing so well suddenly they're not doing well what do you mean they were running 18 flamers yeah because honestly like without those you were fine they they were with gray knights down at the low 40s it was the sad we were on the we were on the fringe of like this is not great but like it was playable and then we got flamers and shot up to all-star tier because we could just run the best unit in the game and without that and losing Armor of Contempt, because like you took advantage of Armor of Contempt maybe the most. Like There's probably a Loyalist Marine who got about equivalent out of it, but like the Scarab Occult Terminator was like the defensive profile that you checked anti-tank against and failed. Essentially, it, yeah. And like you're going to have to do some thinking on Thousand Suns, because <laughs> I don't think it's in a good spot, and you're going to have to figure something out. It doesn't upset me that much. I, I am someone who plays multiple armies. I own necrons <laughs> i'm used to having armies get shelved i was like you're used to the these are built i haven't touched them in eight months uh so yeah thousand suns is in a slightly worse spot than it was sadly 
I do think against the field it lost a little bit. I think you should look into the Chaos Knights. I yeah, I I own Chaos Knights. I can just go play them for a while and see what's going on. Can all the Questorus frames just lose like 25, 30 points? You have to use big numbers with knights because like if you don't hit a whole like 150, you don't get an extra model. Yeah, like oh, cool. Now your your list is 1920 points. <laughs> yeah, that that can happen in knights. Thanks. Okay, I guess you want to go into Chaos Demons because you've already brought up the Flamer stuff. Let's talk about the demons in the room. (laughs) This is part of my two steps forward, one step back. Chaos Demons is two step forward, one step back. I'd almost say it'd be pure forward if it wasn't for a single stupid change. So let's let's talk about everything else first. Corn. The name Doggo, cheaper. Blood Crushers, cheaper. Doggos, cheaper by a lot. Skull Cannon, cheaper. Still a toy, but I love it. For some reason, the most perfectly priced thing in the Codex, the Bloodthirster, went up 10 points for the loadout that was most correct. Kind of annoying. Whatever. Not the thing that pisses me off. Nurgle. Great unclean ones across the board, down 20 points. Good. It was like, it's still too expensive, but... A group of 10 Plague Bearers? 20 points less. Good. If they lost another 10 points, they're probably one of the best troop choices imaginable, but where they're at now is at least like a really good debating spot. Uh, Beasts of Nurgles lost 10 points a model. Solid. Uh, Plague Drones down 5 points a model. I honestly think they could have dropped 10 points a model, but whatever. It's a good start. Nurgle is in a much healthier slot. Now, Nurgle did not gain the thing I talked about in the whole Demon Codex analysis episode of, like, Nurgle lost its identity in 9th edition and has zero identity. It's it's just ugly models, the army. They're, they're nothing anymore. They have no, no flavor in any of their rules. It's just, here is the cost of these blank data sheets. They're like Necrons, really. <laughs> in a sad way. <laughs> yeah, basically. Nurgle's in a better spot, competitively. They did not solve the flavor issues. Slanesh... Not much changed, really, right? Not really. Fiends are a bit cheaper, and fiends are pretty cool. Uh, Seekers are a little cheaper. Seekers have never been good, so that might be interesting if they're finally a little bit playable. Seleski, the twins, the Wonder Twins, they got dumpstered in 9th edition's Codex. I really liked them in the 8th edition Codex. They were really cool. They were, like, a cheaper secret keeper of secrets. But they, they were, like, a really fun... That you could use them to buff a bunch of demonettes, and there was some cool stuff. They lost like everything, and for some reason were 200 points. Okay. Uh, so they're down to 180, but they still lost everything, so it's like, meh. Bellacor, by some miracle, remains unchanged. Congratulations, Bellacor. I really thought you were screwed. <laughs> <laughs> We've we've skipped over something. We, we have. Uh, Soul Grinders unchanged, Demon Prince unchanged. I think Demon Prince could have lost 10 points, but whatever. I really wish Wings had gone down on every Chaos Army, but that's a different debate. The Soul Grinder stayed the same. I know some people really like like Soul Grinder heavy lists. That's cool for them. I don't own a Soul Grinder. I'll probably print one eventually because I hate that kit. And 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 Zinch. Zinch, hi. Hi, yeah. So point-wise, Zinch is pretty interesting. Like So point-wise... Uh, Screamers are down to 25 points. Thank God, because that was an awful price for how bad they were. Uh, The Burning Chariot is down 5 points. That's neat. Master Mutator went up 5 points. I knew it was the best one, and if for some reason it wasn't the most expensive one, now it is. Uh, Fade Skimmer went up 10 points. No one is shocked. It deserved it. Lord of Change went up 10 points. We're being punished a little bit because the turkey is cool, but whatever. I don't think that's that big of a deal. Like, it's already an expensive model, so, like... Yeah, you were already only bringing one. The problems with Zinch as an army is there's no reason to bring a second Lord of Change because you run out of frickin' spells. Anyway. So, yeah, that's fine. Whatever. So, Flamers. Flamers. They're a problem. That problematic, awful, awful data sheet. Yeah. The one that should have gone up at least 10 points. We could argue if they never wanted to see competitive play, they could jack it up. 25 points and it would just be a bad unit for a while and then it could come down over time yeah you'd kind of just be like yeah ignore it don't play it when they when people have forgotten about it you can get it back 
Yeah. So that would have been a nice solution if they wanted to dumpster it. If they just jacked it up 10 points, that would have worked. It'd probably still be one of the best units in the game, so maybe 15 points to guarantee it's mid. Okay. That's not what they did. It didn't change in points, Eric. No, it did not. Three wound model with a three up and vulnerable save at ranged. Didn't change in points. It's 25 points still. Do you know what changed? What changed? The flamers, who are named the same as the flamer, the type of weapon, (laughs) whose defining characteristic is it automatically hits. They don't automatically hit anymore. Are you fucking high? I mean, they fixed the problem. (laughs) This is a level of fuck up. This is beyond stupidity. Oh, I think it's hilarious. They just need to change the name of Flamers now. <laughs> I, If they had done it at the same time, I'd be like, fine. That's the stupidest thing, but fine. Flamers are now non-flames, and they don't auto-hit. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. I, I'm so mad. This is the dumbest thing. It solves the problem. Do you want to know the more fucked up part? I did the quick math this morning in my rage. Flamers, as they were, auto-hitting. They got each each single model. Let's focus on one model. Okay, yeah, yeah. A flamer has D6 plus three shots at a stupid good profile of the whole flamer profile. But D6 automatic hits plus three. They have a ballistic skill of three because it's written on the data sheet, but it doesn't matter because they auto-hit. If you have D6 shots that automatically hit, on average, you get 3.5 shots. The math works. 6.5 shots is what they used to do per flamer at 25 points with crazy damage output. Anyway, uh, they were real good. They were. So if we take away their auto hit and make them hit at ballistic skill 3, you have 6.5 shots. 66.7 or 66.6 repeating 7 percent of them hit. 4.3 of them hit now. Okay. You could have just taken away the three generic free hits they got made them a normal flamer, the thing they're named the same as. So it would just be D6 automatic hits. It would be worse. It would be worse than the the change they made. They would be even safer. But you wouldn't have ruined the defining characteristic. You would have actually made it more obvious because it would have been like, what's that unit with the flamer? They're called flamers. It has D6 automatic hits. Oh, like all the flamers in my army. Wow. Yeah, like every other flamer. Oh, wow. This is, I understand now. That's not what they chose to do, Brad. Made that ballistic skill matter. It's on the sheet. We're going to use it. I can't believe. (laughs) I cannot get this through my head. I get that there's some problems going on over in Nottingham, but Jesus Christ. Why did you choose the stupidest solution out of all the (laughs) infinite solutions in the entire universe? There are so many ways of fixing it. And, like, there's a lot of ways to fix it and make sure it's not a problem. Like, just double the point cost. GG. Yeah, you can put them in the punishment box. I'm aware of how game design works. Sometimes we don't design for balance. We design for the happiness of people playing the game. Right. And they don't always want balance. They think they do, but they don't. What they want is a change of the status quo when it gets tiring. And you want that visceral emotion where it's like, yeah, fuck flamers, man. They're, they should be double points. That's right. This doesn't really do that. <laughs> this just is dumb. I hate this so much. Maybe when they wrote it, the power was out and they were like <laughs> scrawling it down in the dark and didn't actually see what they were pointing it to. And this was a, a change for something else. <laughs> I'm just so mad. It's so stupid. You had one job. So demons overall, like, let's ignore the flamer in the room, Brad. Let's talk about overall demons. Ignoring the stupidest change ever, I actually like the rest of the demon changes. Nurgle still needs an identity, but whatever. It's a miracle Bellacor got away with it. Bravo, Bellacor. <laughs> anyway, we've we finished chaos. That means we're going to move into... Let's do elves. All right, we can go through elves. Uh, I'm going to spend a lot less time on elves for the most part. Azurani, uh, Craftworld Eldar, as everyone who speaks English would say. 
<laughs> got some weird point increases, got some decent point decreases on a couple weird things. Uh, Dark Reapers are down 15 points. That's cool. They suck. Meh changes all around. Big win. Uh, they undid that stupid data slate thing I hated where they changed fire and fade variants to be once per game, yeah. which was kind of defeating the purpose of like they're supposed to be the fast, agile, mobile army. Yeah, I remember you telling me about that one, and I was like, that doesn't make any damn sense. I appreciate undoing that one. So it's hard to tell with Azrani. They were already one of the better factions, although they had been falling pretty steadily after their last round of nerfs. They'll probably be fine. Uh, there is a funny one for like just a little haha moment. Uh, I was reading like right away. Oh wow, they got a couple point increases. That's weird. And one of them was Wraith Guard, and I was like, why did they punish Wraiths? No one plays Wraiths. Everyone wishes you could play Wraiths. Apparently, one one competitive player plays Wraith Guard with D size, which is the one thing that went up in five points is the D scythe. Um, oh okay. So apparently they nerfed an option on a unit nobody plays because a single competitive player played a slant list around them. Sounds right. <laughs> Real weird, but whatever. I, I can't say it's going to do anything. Meh. They seem like they were basically untouched. It's too hard for me to talk about. I don't have the experience to say what's good and bad in there. Uh, Harlequins. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe they increased the point cost of Webway Gate. <laughs> What what were what were you thinking of? Oh god. There is the cute thing of mirror architect got unnerfed and just correctly pointed. 10 out of 10 change. I like that. Rather than trying to balance harlequins by just increasing their points to be correct for their data sheets, they lost their 4 up universal invulnerable save and had it replaced with a 5 up. It's so weird because that's like their defining trait is Zinch Demons used to be the four up invulnerable save. Harlequins mashed it because of the whole the two gods of deceit playing with each other fucking around. They just randomly, I guess, ours changed to a three slash six, which is real weird. It is weird. It'd be kind of cute if they ended up with an identical. It'd be real dirty. We probably shouldn't do this, but I think it would be cute from a narrative standpoint if they ended up with a demon save that mashed Zinch Demon saves just as Chagorath fucking around with zinch but uh let's not do that <laughs> i think that would be problematic brad <laughs> they're four up in Voln. every save is a coin flip is kind of adorable and very sad rather than just properly point the damn models they decided to just destroy that it's gonna be a real problem honestly how do you play when you're so weak defensively you hide in boats like you have been doing yeah now will they be finally below a 50 percent win rate because they were problems i i'm not saying harlequin players were guilt-free here we're on a third round of nerfs here and uh they still were the highest or second highest army in the game for most of the last round of changes but like honestly a lot of that is could be handled from points like troops don't need to be 13 there's like the galaxy brain just making this one change let them undo a bunch of other nerfs next time so that like luck of the laughing god says what it says in the book and like light Sadith gets changed back and like all that stuff i was gonna say like they get all of the fun flavorful interesting parts of their army back i do wonder if harlequins gets dumpstered down to like a 35 percent win rate from this from their like 65 or whatever they were sitting at maybe that means like Next go around, they can rip out that five paragraphs of nerfs and just leave this one. The long game. I feel like I'm giving more credit than credit is due when it comes to the company that just pumped out that flamer change. <laughs> yeah, no matter what, Harlequins are not better. They definitely got the nerf. You you got hit hard. <laughs> you kind of deserved it still. It's been quite a few rounds of having to nerf you. I, as a Drakari player, I was there. I do almost hope that it does, like, actually dumpster the so that maybe they can unleash some of the things that they've done otherwise. I honestly think the worst thing would be, like, if Harlequins just drop in play rate a bunch, but still hover at, like, 50% like this. That'd be awful. Okay, Drakari. There's not much to talk about, honestly. There's one big thing to talk about. Which is? I saved this for the show. Because I knew you were in a bad mood, and I knew it would make you more angry. 
Oh, wonderful. So you know how we're recording these hot takes? That we're currently two and a half hours into this recording right now, wherever you are in this episode. Thank the editor for how much got cleaned. (laughs) Maybe this is the second episode, who knows? Yeah, hot takes have a history of becoming two episodes. Yeah, so if this is a part two... Welcome! (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, the whole update's not out yet. Oh. In the original Warcom article a week or two ago... They mentioned Ark of Omen showed it off for the first time, the new the new list-style detachment thing, right? The Ark of Omen detachment got shown off, and they mentioned in the article, the Warcom team did. The very reliable Warcom team that told you to buy vehicles to play with Bellacor. I'll never forgive them for that, but the Warcom team went, Hey, don't worry about the fact that Ark of Omen looks like it gets rid of all the other detachment types because we're going to properly compensate people who require other detachment types like Dark Angels and Drukhari. Uh, Space Marines can't be forgotten, so Dark Angels got stuff written to fix them temporarily, right? <laughs> okay. They forgot Drukhari. And I got pointed out like, hey, you kind of just bricked a whole faction. We can't play. Our rules prevent us from filling out a 2,000-point army using this detachment without playing a really bad army. And they were like, oh, shit, we forgot. I mean, tell them the Drukhari update is coming out. It'll be out in a few weeks. There will be an FAQ. Oh, no. They, They literally forgot. Oh. And just said, hey, in a couple weeks, we're gonna bring in an FAQ that fixes it so that you can... Use the new fucking detachments, right? That's awful, dude. It's so fucking infuriating. That's not great. <laughs> Especially because they said a couple weeks, and this is this is like yesterday they posted this or today. A couple weeks is a long time to not be able to play an army. But the defense to that is technically these rules don't go live for another week and a half. This is all an emergency dump of rules. Right, because alcohol is bad for you. We're, we're not talking about that. <laughs> we're not talking about the drama. But uh, yeah, so it's it's bad because a couple of weeks is past when this becomes legal. So now you've got like LVO where they were like, do we use the old dead rules or do we use the new rules that everyone will have like a week to figure stuff out with? If you were planning to play Drakari, you're not voting for new rules when you may not be able to play your damn faction. Is there a way to like play even if it's not great? There's a bad way to play. Yeah, you could play it. Okay. It's just you're not winning a fucking tournament with it. Right. You're not winning against casual space marines with it. Oof. To to explain it for those who don't know how Drukari works. Usually you have three patrols? You have patrols and you can use one, two, or three. They're all zero CP for Drukari. You could also play a fluffy list in a battalion playing one of each with a whole bunch of extra rules for how you have to construct your army and play this like super balanced list. That would be the way that you could still technically play. Okay. I didn't know that that was a thing. It's... Not used. As a faction, you just run patrols because you don't get punished for running a bunch of patrols. And then there's a whole bunch of restrictions in the army to make you run a bunch of patrols with how HQs function and stuff and how they have to be. Everything is like, I will never work with anyone else. So they have to be alone in their detachment. There's a whole bunch of stuff that just doesn't work rules wise with one mega detachment that everything has to be jammed in when everything says I can't play with anybody. So yeah. It's pretty funny to me. I I got a good chuckle. It's pretty funny to me. (laughs) Drakari players, we've been the bad guys for half the edition, and like, we're rolling with when we get hit. It's fine. (laughs) (laughs) It's pretty funny. (laughs) Man, once you get the ability to play correctly again, Drakari will be fine. No one cares. Let's keep going, though. Leagues of Otan, you got some nerfs. You were a really good army. I don't know if you got enough nerfs, but meh, good enough. It's so new that I don't really know. But Necrons, you're happy about the Necron changes, aren't you? They're not bad. Okay, two step forward, one step back again. <laughs> the the mixed feelings. Eternal Conquerors change. I have said it a hundred thousand times that the Codex is held up by OPSEC all. We all know. We know I don't like it. The Codex should have been written right and that should not be a thing. 
unfortunately, the Codex wasn't written right, so it kind of has to be a thing. That is the reason you were existing for a while. Currently, Necrons has been in a better spot recently. They kind of fell back to like 50-ish percent win rate near the end of the season as everyone figured them out. And then they nerfed Obsec all to be the equivalent of Indrukari, what we call all-consuming. It means that Eternal Conquerors, you can't take a circumstance of awakening when you take it. Uh, you only get one of your two custom sub-faction rules if you take it. This would be not that much of a nerf, in my opinion, a correct choice overall for the balance of the army, except it is such a stupid way to write this. The correct wording should be remove Eternal Conquerors. It should just be delete it because you've made a rule in the book that is always wrong. You should never, ever, 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 ever pick Eternal Conquerors. You have left it in the book. You have written an extra rule talking about it to ensure that it is a trap. It is now bad game design. You have written a purely worse rule that serves no purpose because Nihilic Dynasty exists. Trazen's Dynasty. Trazen's Dynasty gives Obsec all. It also gives Armor of Contempt if you're fully within your deployment zone, which makes Eternal Conquerors useless. So, why are there rules about Eternal Conquerors written not only in the Codex, but then in a data slate to balance it, to balance it to a point where it should never be used? Just write the sentence, remove Eternal Conquerors from this list. This, this is something that most people won't understand why I'm so mad. I am mad because I care about game design stuff. This is infuriating to read when it's like, this is the stuff that you get told never do these things. And then you watch successful companies do these things. And it's not like one of those, like, every once in a while you have to do the wrong thing as a designer because that's like, I've figured out where it's correct to bend the rules. This isn't one of those. This is just dumb. But the vast majority of the Necron changes I'm in favor of. Like, it, overall, this is a happy feeling for Necrons. Uh, Necron Warriors, down two points model. Thank God, they're terrible. Death Marks, I just made fun of them last episode as the worst fucking model. They're so bad for their points. Down two points a model. Still probably bad, but at least math-wise, they're a little better. Doomsday Arc, hilarious. Ghost Arc, also hilarious. Uh, the Doomsday Arc at the beginning of the edition, I believe, was 190 points, and the Strictly Better Forge World 1 was 10 points more, and it was way better. So then they lowered it to, like, 170, and people still pointed out that the other one was better. Then they lowered it to 160, and then it was like, okay, what the hell's <laughs> the point of a Doomstalker? Because for 30 more points, you get a Doomsday Arc. Doomsday Arc still aren't coming off the shelf, because it's a terrible model, in my opinion, but I'm going to assume they're filling up a warehouse somewhere. Because <laughs> they just dropped them to 145 points. An Annihilation Barge is 120 points. A Canoptic Doomstalker is 130 points. For 15 more fucking points, you get an entire Doomsday Arc. Why are you taking anything else? It has to be that the Arcs are filling up warehouses and someone in sales is like, lower that thing. Make it move. I'm sick of seeing these <laughs> on the shelves. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, I'm not saying it's completely wrong that that should go down. But in relationship to the other things, it's like, what? The, the problem is... The data sheet is terrible, like the problem with most Necrons. They could cost 20 points less, and it's still, it's a bad data sheet. At a certain point, we're just trying to figure out what the minimum point cost a tank that can randomly blow something up is worth. <laughs> but like, really statistically unlikely to do it. But it could happen. So then, Lord of Wars, Monolith got cheaper by 30 points. The Death Rays are free, which is good, because the Death Rays are correct. And... This gets into something that affects a lot more armies, but I haven't gotten into. The Lord of War slots, you no longer need to run three of them to take a super heavy and burn CP on it, or run only one of them in an aux and lose the rules on the unit. Right. Like, they're a lot better than they were. And the Monolith's cheaper. The Monolith still sucks because it's really hard to move. It's essentially terrain, because uh, it lost fly, so it's it's too fat to go anywhere. I'll be honest, I didn't think it could move. It, it it It's a flying ship, Eric. It's just a pyramid, but it's a flying pyramid. 
never seen it move. Every art of them, they're never on the ground. Doesn't mean it can move. <laughs> <laughs> if so, they had flight, they would be flyers, and then you couldn't put it on the battlefield to start. I'd be fine with that. <laughs> At least it wouldn't be terrain in the back line stuck. But yeah, the monolith's still probably a trap, but it's an enticing trap. Tesseract Vault went down 40 points, and I'm a sucker for Catan, so like, maybe. So, it's time to talk about something that I was also sandbagging, because it affects Necrons the most. Well, it affects other armies equally as much, but I know Necrons well enough to describe the problem here. Okay. The Silent King. Hey, it's a Silent King. Do you want to put a Silent King in your army, Eric? Mm, Sure. You can't. Why not? Uh, Two reasons. One, do you want to play his dynasty? No. No one ever does, and no one ever did. You would have to, because he's in the detachment. Right. And he has the dynastic agent keyword, which means he can be in any detachment. He doesn't have to be in his dynasty's detachment. Except, he also has his own keyword for flavor reasons, because they don't know how rules work. (laughs) And because he has that, there is that obscure rule at the beginning of the rules for the Necrons that says you cannot put two dynasties in the same detachment. If you do, lose all your command points, you can't gain any. Ah. (laughs) Right, the Monopoly rule. You lose Battleforged, which is what the game is based off of in the core rulebook. You are not a Battleforged army anymore. So there's that problem that only affects Silent King because Necrons has the extra issue. The more important problem is, he's a Supreme Commander, Eric. They can only be put in Supreme Commander detachments. <laughs> the rules aren't there to put them in the Ark of Omen detachment. It doesn't matter how many points Mortarion, Magnus, and Silent King are. I completely forgot that that's what that is. It's hilarious. You can't play any of your Supreme Commanders by rules right now for some godforsaken reason. Wow. I think you can still play the little ones who can be played in, like, a patrol. Like, the ones who don't have to go in Supreme Commander. Like, I think you could play Bellacor? And I think you could play the Tau one, Shadow Sun? Because I think they don't... And uh, Belisarius Call, I think, can be put, like, in a normal slot. They just happen to also be supreme commanders but they don't have the rule saying like must go in the supreme command attachment cannot play outside of it yeah to, to just give you the long and short of it by raw right now you can't play your 190 dollar silent king for two different reasons well that's good because silent king is dumb to be honest after all of the fixes go into place and you could play him again i think silent king's going to be propping up necrons at a healthy 35 percent win rate oh yeah Necron- necrons are fucked <laughs> Like. It's going to be loose, I'm not going to lie. So, Orcs, Eric, let's move into Orcs. Orcs. Actually, not too many changes there. Uh, a few changes to equipment, so like your big choppas and stuff like that are cheap. I love that the rocket launcher is still five points. They downed it from ten to five. They remembered it. It's not that they just forgot to fix Orcs. Right, which is more annoying. They were like, the rocket launcher. You know, that thing that fires on and hits on fives because it's on an orc. That's the thing we're worried about. Not a space marine with a multi-melta in a tactical squad and all of his friends can have one and a storm shield and a Dick Whistler 5,000. No, one in ten boys with a rocket launcher needs five extra points, though. (laughs) On a similar thing, custom jobs still cost points. I would be a fan of seeing what would happen if custom jobs went free. I'll tell you that right now, it won't break anything. Especially because the one thing that might be concerning would be if a flyer had them. If a flyer had it, but guess what happened to flyers? <laughs> they got nerfed and then they got grounded. Uh, I did have someone point out when we posted the episode today that the Stompa is way less embarrassing in Ark of Omens because it can be in your main detachment now. Kind of spicy, especially for like Gorkonaut, Morkonaut. That's exactly where I was going. I was like, Orcs, I would have been disappointed because of the custom jobs. That should be free just because it's interesting. 
The Flyers, man, I just want to play some of those cool Flyers, but whatever. Okay. Gorkana and Morkana both went down 35 points. They're still very expensive, 330, 315, but we're like, okay, I'm interested. It's like the monolith. It's the enticing trap now. Exactly. I know it's wrong, but I'm going to play it. Yeah. And because Arcs of Omen detachment lets us do Lord of War stuff, dude, I'm I'm having fun with that stomp up. <laughs> This is for later. You don't have to tell me right now. We don't have to read the Stompa and analyze it for an hour. How bad is a Stompa? Mm. Can a Stompa beat a knight in combat? Maybe. If I put her in a canoe, will it float? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it becomes a problem. Is like it, it honestly is like probably, but it's only probably, and it's 675 points. I think the Gorkonaut Morkonaut is kind of cute. I, I actually am going to try Gorkonaut and Morkonaut now. I don't think Stompa's actually, like, I might do it just because, rules-wise, I can. On the plus side, as I learned when I was looking up all the stuff for last episode, they're pretty cheap to buy, especially if you go with a proper sales place and not MSRP. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So not much has changed. Even before the point change, just seeing the Arc of Omen detachment, I was like, I'm going to try Gorkana and Markana. Here's a bonus for you as an orc player. Don't all your boys in attacking have minus one AP? Like, don't they have that uh, Choppa is minus one AP? Big Choppa is minus one. The Choppa is minus one as well. Yeah. 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 That's pretty good with AOC gone. That's a big buff for orcs if you want to play boys. Yeah. And commandos, etc. Anything that hits. Honestly, like all of my interesting thoughts are because of the detachment. Dude, I can go elite heavy with commandos. Oh, yeah. But there was some weird stuff that I saw about like boss Snickrot because he's tied to blood axes. And blood axes has some weird stuff because it's part of the whatever supplement thing. That doesn't make sense because Blood Axes is in the Codex. Yeah, but some of the rules is. Oh. I think some of his rules are or something like that. I don't. I saw somebody post like, oh, this is weird. Does that actually still work? And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> My plan of commando spam with Snickrot is in danger. I think we're safe because of the preview video last week that like very clearly showed we're getting a new Snickrot. I hope. I hope all of his rules stay of, like, we get to have the fun with it. Yeah, so I, I do think Oryx probably a slight buff, but... All right, let's uh do a Tau quickie here. Okay. So, Tau, sorry, guys. <laughs> Especially if you play Farsight Enclaves, they hate you. I'm sorry, guys. Like, Crisis up another five points a model. Commander's up... F- 10 points a model each. Uh, because you only have one detachment, Farsight Enclaves is capped at two commanders, just like everybody else, because they can all pay a CP to be Farsight Enclaves, because you can get a second of a rule of one unit in a detachment. That's their defining characteristic. Special thing isn't one additional. It's if a rule limits you to one, you may take two. So Farsight limits you to two, it can't use the rule to get a third. So far, Farsight Enclaves could really use an FAQ change. Now, Crisis Suit's costing more. I'm kind of behind because you don't have to run Crute anymore to fill out a detachment. Right, okay. And that's basically why anyone ran Crute. It is kind of funny that they're like, they made it so they're not required anymore, and also they cost more points. Why? Fuck Crute. People must have been 3D printing them or something, and they're mad. <laughs> <laughs> Tau, for the most part, is is okay Minor issues, though I'd argue it was in the correct direction in Tau, but it upset people that it was at all, and then it's rough. Meh. I I think Tau in general mostly got a minor nerf to compensate for the new detachment being good for everyone but Farside Enclaves, but Farside Enclaves kind of got shit on. I suppose it's time to hit the final two. So let's talk about Nids first. You got nerfed. Everyone else is getting free and discounted options. They made yours cost points. (laughs) (laughs) Checkmate. (laughs) Checkmate. Yeah, I mean, like, they did get hit pretty hard. A bunch of things are up points. Options cost points. You were the top faction. It's kind of crappy that you get hit from everything every angle like if you were thinking about using a unit it got hit um but at the same time you were top dog we knew it was happening 
I I can't say there's much surprise here. Zoan throws up fucking 20 points a model. Is, oh my god. You'll still run three of them because you kind of have to. They're so good. But then you'll never run more than three. Nid's got a hit. And it wasn't really a shock. That's what happens when you're top dog. Even with the changes and the, the point changes, Nids is still going to be fine. There's going to be some changes that they need to figure out. But I see no reason that they won't still be good. On the other side of things, Gene Stealers. Did they get forgotten again? No, this is the first time GW remembered them. They went two whole point changes being forgotten. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it looks like they got a bunch of point decreases. Their HQs are super limited on how they can be run, so the point decreases can't be, like, abused there in any way. The kit stuff on Neophytes and Acolytes, I don't know the army that well, but I know people were pretty hyped about them. Yeah, it followed where, like, a lot of the war gear is cheaper. It seems like it could be good. <laughs> Yeah, the big thing for me is Aberrant's going down, because again, it's the part of Gene Stealers that calls to me, but then this is the one that I told you about when they came out, where I was like, I kind of like this one section of their army, but here's the problem. I describe an Aberrant, and then I describe Grotesques, and I describe the Biophagus, and then I describe Homunculus, and then you realize that it's just Covens in a different army. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm with you. It's it's nice to see Aberrant's Bominance down. Jackals are up three points. That's the only list that Gene Stealer Cults ever saw success with was spamming them. It was like take max legal amount of jackals, which I guess like with the new detachment and stuff like that, maybe they're scared. <laughs> It's kind of plus minus because like they were spamming the min loadout. If you want to play them where they can actually like attack in combat and be pretty good as little harassers like a lot of other armies fast attack equivalent things, you can give them power weapons for free now, which is just how it used to be point wise. You lose nothing compared to how they used to be essentially. Okay. So if you're playing them that way, they're a wash. If you're playing them the abusive min loadout way, they're more expensive. Okay. I mean, that makes sense then. I know the big one when I was reading up on what Gene Stealer Cult players were excited about. Everyone's very happy the cult icons correctly are like 10 points down because they were insanely expensive, even though it's just, it's that GW really overvalues reanimation. Yeah. And I, I get it to a point, but like, there's a certain aspect of like, it's so bad. Why does it even exist? That wraps up every faction. We made it to the end, Eric. We did make it to the end. This has been a pretty long recording. I mean, it's a hot take, but yeah, I mean, I'm, dude, I'm excited for the changes. Yeah, I, I summed it up 15 times now. I have mostly positive, but everything has that taint of problems. But overall, pretty happy. Thanks for sticking around. If you enjoyed this, uh, I'm very happy to hear that. If you like our stuff, do the YouTube pleasantries. A lot of work probably had to go into this after we hit stop here in a few minutes. So thank the editors for us. And thanks to our patrons for keeping this show running and paying the editors because we couldn't afford it alone. That's it, everyone. Play that music and get us out of here. <laughs>